Hi, this is Jay from Codian. This video is going to focus on how to add multiple attachments to um, an approval in Power Automate. It's quite a topical conversation at the moment on the community. I think there's a few older blog posts out there that have got um, some guidance that possibly isn't the optimal way of doing it. So uh, hopefully this video is a bit of a refresh and shows you uh, the simplest way of doing it. I'm also going to add a slight revision to that way um, for the more complex scenarios where on occasion you may need to uh, force the format of the data into a certain uh, way so that you can avoid um, corrupt files, but uh, we'll, we'll cover that off as we go. So without further ado, let's get some files. Um, from SharePoint, I've got something on my clipboard to short circuit that. So we've got some files I'm going to pick up from a document set in this example. Um, the next step I'm going to do is create a variable. So do a search for in it, and we'll pull up the variable. Uh, it's going to be a type array. So whenever you're working with a collection of files, typically what you will do is put the files themselves into an array object, and then you can pass the array object to the action that's going to deal with those multiple files. So in this example, we're going to attach them to, um, to uh, an approval, but it could be attaching them to an email or sending them to a merge action, uh, so on and so forth. So now we've got um, the files coming from SharePoint, or at least the properties of those files, and we've got the array variable. We need to get the actual file content, so the file itself. So let's add that in, and we'll go get file content from SharePoint, and we'll pick that up. We're going to pass in the file identifier property from the get files properties only action. So let's just do a search for identifier. Why is that like up there? We go and that's automatically going to put it into an apply to each loop and that is because the get files is returning a collection of files so an array so we'll always put an array when you use a, a property from an array uh, object it's always going to put that into apply to each loop even if there's only one because it's still an array and um, the next thing we need to do is to take this file and put it into inside our variable okay so we're going to click add an action and we're going to do append to Array variable, uh, let's just click that and we'll find it, there we go, append to array variable. We're going to select files and now we need to put some data in here. Um, I guess the challenge is knowing what format that data um, should look like and the easiest way of finding that out is we jump down here and we'll add a, uh, an action in, let's just do approval and start and wait for an approval. We'll just do first respond. Obviously, it can be whatever you need it to be. I'm just popping some stuff in quickly for demo purposes. I'll assign it to me. And let's jump down here and you'll see that this is the attachments. Now, typically what you would do is you pass the array variable in here. But I need to know what format that data needs to look like for my append action in here. So, what I'm going to do to get around this or to understand it, I'm going to just go in, in normally and if I had one attachment, I'm going to type in some data and I'm going to switch back to the array and that tells me the format of the data. So I'm just going to cut that out, um, show what I did there. I'm just going to take the, the curly brackets. I'm not going to take the square brackets because the square brackets is the start of the array and I'm just going to delete that out. So let's now copy that into a pen to array variable and the first thing we're going to do is get rid of the, the data in the name um, value um, and I'm going to replace that with um, the file extension so let's select put the, uh, com uh, put the cursor even in the right place select the file name with extension and then I'm going to do the same for the file content itself so let's just get rid of that and there we go file content let's make sure again cursor in the right place select file content okay now Let's just quickly run that through. We've got some files from SharePoint. We've got a variable to store the array of files that we're gonna, we're gonna populate. We've gone to SharePoint and got the file content and then we've appended to the array variable at the top with the file name and the file itself in this particular format. And then in the start and wait for approval, well, we haven't done that yet, we're gonna pass in the files variable, okay? So now that is our flow complete. And I'll click save and test. And let's test it. So I would say, um, you know, 
99 times out of 100, this should work in your tenant, in, in your actions, but there are some circumstances, and I know um, we've had them where we've been into different tenants and they've behaved in different ways for whatever reasons those might be. Obviously, Microsoft rollout changes the regions at different times, etc. So you may, you may find that you have an issue with corrupt files. If you do, keep watching this video and I'll, I'll jump onto that in a second. So um, my email's now come through and I'll just bring that across. And there's the email and I've got four attachments on there. I won't bring them all over. There's a HTML email, a te well, HTML, a text file actually. I've got a Word document as well. Um, and all of these files, they've come through absolutely fine. They're not um, corrupt in any way. So that's all good. And just a proof, here's the last one. If I drag it across, yeah, PowerPoint as well. So that's all fine. That's all worked exactly as we would like. Um, and let's just show you what's happening inside this apply to each loop. So what we'll do now, if, if, if go, and tr go, and, go and try what I've just shown you, and if you have a problem, come back to the video and watch it from this point. Um, and I'm gonna cover off what happens if, if you're having some tr problems with corrupt files. So in the append to array variable, you'll notice that there's this extra data that's been added by the file content, and it's actually a structure, so we've got the, the MIME type, the type of file it is, and then we've got this dollar content, which is a base64 string, uh, which is you know the binary file, base64 encoded, put in. So that is the actual file. So there's more data being put into here than normal. If, if you write in a file content and just pass in a base64 string, you may experience um, some issues. Um, and the, what I would suggest you do is as follows. So let's edit this and let's let's change this here. We don't want to do this where we do base64 and then just pass in the file content because on occasion, whilst that may work for some files, for some it may not, and in some actions, some regions, definitely that causes a problem. Um, so what we need to do is actually put in the full file content structure as it were so bear with me a moment i'm sure i've got a copy and paste that i can do with this somewhere here's one i made earlier somewhere ah oh, here we go i found it so let's just get rid of that let's come back to here so i'm going to copy paste i'll put this into the um into the blog post notes uh onto the video as well in, uh where it's posted so that you can access this so i've just pasted in hard-coded a generic, I've put in a generic content type which covers all files, and then in the content, that's where we want to put in just the base64 string. I know there's some expressions out there about getting a dollar content direct from file content, but the cleanest way to get access to just the base64 string is to go to your expression builder, again, and this time do base64, and your dynamic content, and then go and find your, your file content. And there we go. Okay, so this time we've built this structure ourselves to ensure that it's always going to be there, it's going to be correct. Uh, and we've extracted from the file contents just the base64 string. So let's test this. And it should work in exactly the same way as what we've seen before. So I'll do, uh, yeah, I know I've got test run, that's fine. So that's going to go through and just as these pop up, we'll have a quick look inside the append to array variable as we did before, and you shouldn't see any difference in the in the data structure hopefully <laughs> always for a demo video where it starts to run slowly getting files from SharePoint okay I've just resumed that because it was uh, running a little bit slowly I think one of these must have taken a while to execute not sure which one I don't know anyhow Let's just get back to the first one and look inside and you can see in there that we've got the file content that's come out and look inside the append to array variable and you can see that that data has been popped in correctly. Excellent, okay, uh, let's double check our email again that should have come across and again, all of those files have, have come across without issue and we've got those four attachments there. So hopefully that, um, shows you how to add those multiple attachments. Um, if you are having problems, please post on the forum. Um, you can obviously send me a direct message as well. 
Um, uh, and if I'm not around, somebody in the community will sure be able to help.